All right, Jim. Well, let's get some questions here on the show on the drive through finally. This one sent the corny drive through at gmail.com from Jeff Ozzy Osbourne in Enid, Oklahoma. Enid, Oklahoma. I spent a month there one night. Where is that in Oklahoma? Uh, the southwestern part of the state, as I, as I recall. Jim, or, I've... Or at least southern. I, don't, I think everything's western out there, but southern Oklahoma. Jim, I've heard you talk many times about things you've learned from your different territory visits and the bookers of same. Watts, Jarrett, Dusty, etc. I know you've said the main reason you went to the WWE was to help you pay for Smoky Mountain. But once you got there, was there anything you learned from the WWE machine or Vince himself that you carried over to Smoky Mountain or later OVW or ROH, TNA, etc.? And M-O-U-S-E. Um, well, yes, obviously, and a lot of it was stuff they don't even do anymore. Um, but I've mentioned a lot on the various programs we've done. Geez, Vince used to say this, or Vince used to do this, or Vince would have had a cow if we'd have done that, and now they're doing it. So a lot about formatting television, and especially promoting not just for learning from Vince, but learning from working for the WWF, the, they had an incredible staff of live event promoters and Ed Cohen, who booked the arenas, um, had a great, they called them market reps. They would assign, you know, individuals to promote the towns and they had a great technical crew at the studio. And I picked up a lot just from watching on editing or post-production or whatever, you know, just little things that you could observe and learn. And yes, for a company that big and that successful, just because, you know, it, it they didn't always do the classic pro wrestling presentation of the wrestling doesn't mean that, you know, a lot of other facets of the company weren't, you know, great or something that you could learn from. So, yeah, I mean, you know... <laughs> And and also, honestly, just watching Vince try to determine, because he had a, an embarrassment of riches on the talent roster at that point in the, especially in the late 90s. And, you know, trying to watch him bridge from pay-per-view attraction to pay-per-view attraction and still keep everybody in good shape was, uh, you know, the the thing where we branched off after Michaels and Undertaker and Hell in a Cell and Taker went with Kane because then Michaels had Austin on the horizon. But, uh, you know, uh, there's a ton of things that you could learn from Vince, especially when he was, what do I want to say, more cognizant and on top of his game instead of worrying about being a publicly traded billionaire and, and fucking, you know... When he was, Vince was more creative, more successful, and a lot more fun to work with when he was worried about losing five million instead of five billion. When five million dollars meant more to Vince, he, he was easier to work with. Were you surprised? What did you expect going in there? I mean, you talking about things you learned and things that were lessons that you took out of there. Did you think going in there in the summer of 93 that it would be in any way a learning experience or did you think you kind of knew already how they were doing things? Well, no, I had no idea how they were doing. I'd never been to the shows, never worked for the company. And, uh, you know, I knew many of the people there, but not in that arrangement. So no, I didn't have any idea. I mean, I saw their product and, and how, what it looked like on television, but I didn't have any idea how they did it or put it together. Didn't know a lot of the agents had never got a chance to meet Jack Lanza or George, the animal steel until I got there and, you know, so seeing how they did everything, how they put everything together, of course, there were things that if I'd had the power to, I would have changed such as those goddamn early marathon TV tapings where we were at the building at fucking quarter to one in the morning, some nights. Um, but no, I, I didn't know how long it was going to last. I thought, okay, this is going to be the heavenly bodies. Now are getting some shots on, WWF television and pay-per-views to make a little extra money and I can promote Smoky Mountain Wrestling. How long it was going to last or what that I was ever going to go there full-time or 
the developmental program or everything else, I had no earthly idea. 